Onion Cycles podcast is about thought-provoking, emotion-evoking, action-driven, step-by-step guidance to explore the unique, glorious and wonderful ocean of your being. Because healing is a multi-layered process of getting to know oneself. Become the self-empowered empiric researcher by discovering the unique layers of your existence. With your host, Nadine Alma, welcome to the Holistic Healing Hub. Welcome to the Onion Cycles podcast. Hello and welcome back, my beloved fellow healing onions. I welcome you to this place of vulnerability where we open up our hearts and open up our souls and expand our consciousness to heal, to know ourselves, to become the versions of ourselves that we want to be in this life. I am so honored that you decided to invest some of your time with me this week again. I send you a big bear hug from my corner of the world. I want to um, give you a quick disclaimer if you hear some barking in the background. That is our lovely sheep herding dog and he is very talkative. So whenever he sees a bird fly by or some other things that he deems necessary to communicate, he will do so. But please, I hope it doesn't disturb you receiving the messages of this recording. With that said, let's dive straight in. I can't wait for the topic of this week. We are at story 15, episode 15, Minimalism. Oh, what a lovely topic. Because, counter to what everyone thinks about minimalism, it's actually about more. And why that is, I will get to shortly. I have prepared some existential questions that might be answered during the process of minimalism. Let me just read them out to you. Why do we have what we have? Why do we crave what we crave? What makes us happy? What are our unique necessities? And how do they define us? What do we want in our home? What have we outgrown? Who do we want to be? And how do we want to live our lives? Who are we? Wow, these are big questions, I know that. But I've come to believe through my own journey that minimalism is quite the way to go about answering them. Let me just start with something that I feel very deeply. It is not about the number of things you own. It is about the feeling they give you. So with that said, the edge of minimalism is taken off. Because in our mainstream understanding today, minimalism has somehow become a word associated with purging. And it lost the deeper essence behind it. It is basically getting in touch with your innermost being, challenging belief systems, capturing attention toward your whys. There are, I would say, three ways to approach minimalism in uh, our society today. So there is the first approach, whenever someone is moving from one accommodation to another, they do a fast declutter, if they declutter at all, but some do go through their things, pack them up and then throw the other stuff that they feel like there is no reason for for them to be kept out. That is one approach. Then the second approach is that 
we feel so overwhelmed at some point in our lives that we just purge meaning we either order a whole container where you can just throw stuff in or we have a whole carload full to donate or throw away after spending two days purging every single room every closet every thing that we deem unnecessary anymore and that is no small feat is it because most of us own more than 30,000 things that is like an average so decluttering and purging is quite the event and it can be very healing in itself just confronting the correspondence between the clutter we have in our heads and the clutter that is visible in our environment in our home so this is also an approach that can bring forth a lot of emotions and also give oneself a feeling of more contentment afterwards because it is said that what is visible around us is a perfect mirror of how we are approaching life from within how our brain works how our inner world affects the outer world we live in every day there is minimalism which to me is a slow declutter so we have the moving which is a very fast declutter if a declutter at all the purging with it being just an impulsive form of declutter and then i feel minim minimalism done in awareness and mindful and with intention and attention is a slow declutter it is a process that can take up to several years in my own experience i started just about six seven years ago when i had my second burnout and recovered from it and was moving from a shared flat with three friends into my first love nest with my back then boyfriend and i had a new approach on life i was a new person i felt like there was so much that needed to go because it didn't reflect my inner world anymore and from there until now years have gone by to me being um, gone from a whole room filled with just clothes because i was a fashionista if you want i was really into fashion and clothes and it was sort of a way of self-expression and masking as well but i went from a whole room with just clothes to owning one backpack and 32 things during a period of five months and in total i've owned not more than 120 things within the last three years so it has been quite the journey and this is why I want to talk about it, because I've come to believe that from my own humble beginnings of understanding of minimalism just being uh, the state of owning less, to now being in an understanding more broader, to realize that it actually isn't about the things we own, it is about the feeling they give you, it is about the healing they hold for you it is about the reflection of the person you want to be in your life the person you are not anymore and here we have minimalism as a perfect tool because it approaches a healing journey which is the essence of our podcast isn't it it approaches a healing journey on three different levels it approaches it from a soul heart level of healing it approaches it from a body level a mental unloading uh, and process if you will and it approaches it from an outside environmental view of things so the soul level and, and heart level and the healing of that is contained in doing it mindfully and doing it slow and accepting that it isn't a quick fix and it, it isn't it can be if that resonates with you please purge go ahead but minimalism in essence is a deep awareness toward functionality, a more intention toward needs and longings, wishes and reasons. And it is an enriching mindset to develop. 
it is an enthralling philosophy if we dive deep into it. And it is an educational process. It defines your lifestyle, who you were, who you are and who you want to be. To come back to the soul heart level healing, I would highly recommend you if you have access to Netflix or YouTube because there are some clips on YouTube as well. Um, to watch Marie Kondo's approach because she has the approach that it is also a practice of gratitude and it is a practice of thinking about what the things we have in our home, in our lives are doing to us on a soul level. Being grateful for them, being grateful for the journey they shared with us being grateful for the memories they bring us or being grateful for the lessons um, all of these memories they bring us and if you want to have a more humorous less serious approach on the subject I do also recommend a German movie well I would believe there are English subtitles it's called a hundred things and it really approaches the subject from a very modern point of view but comes down to the same result and that being what do I want my life to look like what is important to me is it things is it people is it connections is it what I own or do I have a relationship with what I own um, so those are uh, two things I would highly recommend you um, do your own research with and come to the point of understanding that the soul level and heart level healing of minimalism comes with really taking time to diving in what the things you have mean to you. If they don't mean anything anymore, be grateful for them before you give them away. And also be very mindful about what you bring into your life going forward because it is not just about purging and then going out and buying neat new shiny toys to play with and fill the void it is also about sitting in the void and thinking about with what you want to fill that void and maybe you find that the void itself is something that you have been craving some space that opens up the possibility of addressing your deepest fears, your anger, your sadness, and from there fill the void not with things, but with emotions, with new approaches, with new tools of handling or navigating your everyday life. Also, minimalism is happening on the body level, meaning the mental unloading by going through the emotions and going through the memories that the things in our life give us we sort through our life experience we sort through belief systems we sort through behavioral patterns we sort and address what makes us tick as human beings and decide going forth what to keep from that what we want us as people to be in the future say there is like um these political parties in the streets and they give you a pen with the name of their party on it and you collect them because you just take everything that is free of charge and you hoard it in your home and believe me i was one of these people because I had a collection of pens that seeks their equal and um, I addressed that fact why can't I say no when I know that I have enough why do I take these things and if I decide to take these things what grows from there is there like a development of a connection between people or is it um, valuable to me to have a selection of 500 different pens in a drawer or what does it do to me and I discovered that it is hard for me to say no because I want to be liked I want to be likable I want to be 
part of society and not rejected and in taking these free offers of gifts I thought it was my moral duty to say yes and take them but I also am not a wasteful person so I can't throw them away because I feel like that's a terrible waste not to mention the environmental issues it causes until I dove into zero waste and did a lot of volunteer years in the zero waste communities and organizations and I realized that in taking those free gifts I actually contribute to more being produced so the environmental issue um, was a thought error on my part and I realized that it truly isn't about being likable and you can be likable even if you say no for example the first time I tried that out and I said well, you know, I'm going through this process and I um, do really appreciate you handing this out, but I don't want to take it because I have enough. And that sparked actually a conversation that I was really surprised by because that person was busy, but he sort of felt intrigued by what I had to say. And then a conversation came up and that was a healing experience to me personally. So whatever it is in your life that you're hoarding or that you can't say no to or that takes up space in your home, in your drawer, in your cupboards, think about why it is there. Think about why you have so much of it and then address the trigger that lies beneath all of this. And it might just, you never know, develop into a very healing wholesome experience going forth. The last side of minimalism I want to cover today is the outside environment that we create in becoming minimalists, so to speak. Because, like I said, the outside, our home, is a reflection on our inside world. So if you have a home that is full of memorandums and little nitbits and pieces and decorations, that could look absolutely nice and that could be a reflection of your very warm and lovely personality. And if you have a very minimalist approach and everything is stored within cupboards and everything is very neat, modern and edgy, then that may be also a reflection of your personality and that is totally fine. Nonetheless, most homes have at least one drawer where there's like total chaos or one thing they would like to change in their house, in their home, make more orderly or make look more refined. And the process of minimalism and looking at each and every single object that we want to bring change about is doing something on the outside that then is reflected back on the inside. So it is a very neat and lovely process of coming closer to the healed version, to the accepting and not rejecting parts and fragments of our personality by making peace with the person we were, making peace with the person we are and making a step towards the person and the life we want to have. From there, there's really only one other thing to address and that is, well, how do I go about starting this? Because it is a right to feel overwhelmed. It is absolutely relatable as well. Like there is so much stuff and we are not good capitalist citizens if we don't contribute to buying new stuff to filling our homes with stuff to accepting gifts from others even if we don't resonate with them it is a huge process and i would approach the subject of minimalism with a very easy task take one step at a time for example one cupboard one drawer and if you feel cold or if you have a week off just for the purpose of downsizing 
one room. For me, it started with clothes because that was the most I possessed. I had one room and I had three boxes. One box was a definite keep. I would take the item of clothing, I would have it in my hands, I would look at it and I would know this stays because I love it. There is no doubt, no shred of doubt in my mind that I need to keep this. There's a second box and that box is, I'm not quite sure I want to get rid of it. I know it, I don't wear it that much, I don't look at it that much, it doesn't really serve a purpose and I'm not sure I want to keep it up. I'll just get it. And that box stands for storing. Most of the times we keep stuff because we think we will need them and I would suggest a trial year. So everything you are unsure but still don't want to give away, you put in that single box and then you store it in your garage, you store it in your attic or wherever you have storage. You can <clears throat> maybe store it in a friend's house to get it out of sight. And if you think about one of the items in the box within this year of trial, you can get it out and you put it back into your home. If, however, after one year you haven't even touched the things inside, that is a very good sign of you knowing, all right, I don't need it, I can give it away. And then we have the third box, which is the donation box. I approached this donation with a more mindful um, and intentional uh, view on things. I think I had eight months of downsizing to 101 things before I went away and gave up everything, my apartment, my job and all of my possessions except for those things. So my donation process also was divided into three different sections. However you please do whatever you feel called to do and if you just want to get rid of it, just get rid of it. I want to share it nonetheless. So the three different boxes within the box of donations was things that I really just wanted to donate to a charity shop, a second-hand shop, then things I knew had a specific purpose and would be useful to a specific organization. For example, I donated all of my arts and crafts supplies to a primary school. I was sourcing the primary school by calling them and asking if they had need of it. I also donated a lot of my dog's things to a shelter. So these are examples of how you could specify the things that might not be a box one for charity or for just donating and giving away. And a third box contained things that when I had them in my hands, thinking about how they helped me um, in my own journey or what they meant to me, people would come up in my mind, like loved ones, friends, family. Mostly this happened with books and I would um, call them up and ask if they would be interested. And I think eight times out of ten, the people were absolutely delighted to accept this gift of mine. Uh, mainly also because I was going away, so we wouldn't know how we were, <laughs> when we would see each other again. So it was also kind of a very intimate, personal process. But this is a nice thing of giving the things that have served you a new home and a new energy to work with and you never know what uh, your intuitive feeling of re-gifting or, or passing on might do for the other gifted person. And we come here like a full circle to what minimalism truly means to me because minimalism is basically mindfulness. It is intentional living. It is giving you, and now we come back to the statement, the initial statement of the beginning of the podcast, it is about owning more, not necessarily in things. It is more awareness toward functionality, more intention toward needs and longings, wishes and reasons. It is more freedom because less things can free you up but also more clarity on goals and 
more time spent in the present in discerning what serves you, what doesn't anymore, how did it serve you, why did it serve you, and why it doesn't serve you anymore. So it brings about also more gratitude, because the more you approach your things and know how much you already have, and how much you want to have the things you keep in your life, enrich your experience and enrich your connections even, because the deeper connection comes from talking about this process, from re-gifting what you don't need anymore, but someone else could find useful. It is a connection about sharing the very intimate journey of getting rid of stuff and not buying new stuff and why you do that and why you did have this thing you gift, for example, uh, initially why it served you why it doesn't anymore it is a deeper connection to others it is a deeper connection to oneself and it can even be really fun to go through even with your kids I know of at least two beloved friends of mine who are minimalists in their own right with two kids and it is fun for their kids to go and exchange toys with another family, come back with new ones and leave um, the stuff behind that the other kid wants. It's like a swapping. It's a, it's a very fun approach and it is also a very intentional journey. So to conclude, minimalism is not just about giving away. It is a mindset shift towards more gratitude, more um, intention, more attention. It is a deepening of connections. It is not buying new stuff. It is about rethinking your lifestyle choices. Where do you source your stuff? Why do you buy the stuff? Why do you crave what you crave? Like the questions in the beginning all are basically answered by or through the process of your own minimalism journey. The question, what do you own? And why do you own it? We've tackled a lot. And I do believe that all of this is contributing to a thorough healing journey for each and every one who goes on and takes on this task of looking closely at their possessions and looking closely on why they have them and going forth what they want to invest their energy in and bringing back into their home and this takes time and like I always say we are all such beautiful unique people there is no pressure it is your journey there is no right there is no wrong and over the years your relationship with minimalism may deepen may flower and blossom to another understanding from the one you had started out on and this is the joy of a healing process this is the joy of every process is to realize that it is your own it is your decision and there is no right there is no wrong it is deeply unique and with all of that said let me just open my heart wide to you and send you all my love and all my light and all my appreciation I know that you're doing the best you can in the circumstances you are in with the knowledge you have and I do hope that if you take on this journey of minimalism that it will bring you as much freedom and as much discovery as much self-discovery as much answers on why you live your life the way you live it as it did for me it was a truly humbling and a truly blissful process and it's still ongoing i do see you i do understand you and i do love you very much all the best for your coming week all the best for your day stay true to yourself be your most beautiful authentic self and I am so grateful you shared your time with me, my beloved fellow healing onions. <laughs>